Okay, here we are with the next part of this uh, SL5 project. Now, I've had a few questions about, you know, um, how to, you know, someone's had have a bit of wow and flutter problem with, you know, things spinning around. How can you oil the spindle? Well, what we're going to cover in this video is actually uh, taking the platter out so that we can then turn it upside down and get to the PCB. Now, that sort of solves two problems. One, you know, it answers his questions and you know lets me get started on the rest of this project so let's open it up and have a look so we just take this stuff off get your mat out obviously flip this around until it comes up and then basically all we have to do then is just pull this up until it gives and it will eventually it's a lot easier without a camera in the road, I suppose, but there you go. Okay, there we go. So it's basically just a press fit in there. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but that's a tapered fit. So obviously if you push too hard, it gets harder to get it out. So if you were going to drop oil in here, you basically want to lift that up and put your oil just in the bottom there and just let it go flow down however what I would suggest is probably worthwhile is seeing if we can get to the underside of this um, on a different one that I had a different player that actually that shaft came out and then you could actually clean it properly and get into the bearing clean that up because sometimes this old oil goes gummy it maybe collects a bit of dirt and just gets uh, pretty crappy so that would be my suggestion there but you know if you've just worried that it's a a little bit gummy you could probably just put something like WD-40 in there just to and spin it around by hand just to sort of see if that uh, helps clean it up and then drop some oil in after you're sort of satisfied and obviously because the WD-40 is like a penetrative kind of oil it will evaporate eventually but you, you might want to repeat uh, your oiling a little bit after that okay so the next section is now that we've got the platter out of the road we can safely turn this upside down and then we've got access to our four screws and that's going to let us get into it so let me just see if I can pause this here and uh, it doesn't let me pause but it doesn't matter let's just take these screws out listen to this that little crack that sort of indicates to me that that's probably not actually been taken out before anyway so now we should actually be able to lift that up that's the base and then there's the electronic package so that's really um, you know the first thing I wanted to explain um, just how to get into it now this also we unscrew I think these two that's the the very bottom of that shaft that spins around and you know sometimes that can do with a little bit of a, a grease because I'm um, forget actually how that sits in but let's just have a look that's never been apart So if you look here, you've got this circlip here. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you just actually uh, pull that out, that shaft, probably in this one, it'll probably drop out. Okay. If we flip that over, we'll probably find that we can get that shaft actually fully out. Ideally, it goes out of the road first, isn't it? you can see that's already dropped so there you go that's the shaft and now that comes out and you can clean that and oil that I mean this one is in nice condition so there's nothing to do there and that's it um, if you can get it out like that give it a clean give it some oil drop it back in put the circlet back on 
Um, if that hasn't fixed your way on Flutter, then it's something else. Um, there's a possibility, and I'm not sure about this, but uh, either some part of uh, this system here, or maybe some Hall Effect sensors. I actually started thinking about this when I was talking about that other record player that I had problems with. Whether or not, you know, maybe it was something to do with one of these gone a bit funny. But I haven't actually uh, gone into uh, thinking about how that would, how you would test for that and how you would check it. Um, probably if you could just get the, the same style Hall Effect sensors, I'd probably just be inclined just to change them if you just keep having further problems. Because that was sort of the problem that I had, it was just not a very stable speed a bit of like that. So anyway, but of course the one that I had, this was basically solid, locked solid in there and it took some a decent amount of tapping to get it all out and get it spinning at all. So now what I might do is I might just put that circle back on and uh, we'll just stop this clip here for a second. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, pull this PCB out. There's a few capacitors in there that I'd like to change. Then they can go back in and then basically we don't really worry about the PCB too much after that. We do need to take some measurements on once we actually start messing around with the servo gain, but that's pretty much it. We, don't, we only need to access it from this side, we don't need to do any other adjustments. Uh, there's a couple of trim pots uh, under here for the speed. They often, you know, can do with a little bit of a spray of deoxid or something like that. The ones that they put in here don't tend to have too many problems, but if you don't clean it, you may end up with some sort of random problems. So while we're doing the capacitors and things like that as a sort of preventative thing, that's when we'll um, attack that for basically the same reason. You don't want it to be a problem, so don't just leave it. You got, you got the best access once you've taken that circuit board out, so we'll do it then. Okay, that screw is actually holding it down too. It's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, there we go. Now that should come on. There we go. Didn't break anything, that's nice. Just flip it over. Okay, so can we see that? Maybe not. Okay, so we're just looking at the uh, other side of the PCB now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So basically, ten capacitors that uh, I like to change here. And as I said before. That's got nothing to do with diagnostics, it's all about uh, preventative maintenance. A lot of these, you know, are around um, our very uh, hard to get, very old uh, ICs. Now they're pretty robust, um, you know, the thing's still working, so why don't we protect them just by, you know, throwing about a dollar's worth of, you know, new capacitors in it. Uh, to me that makes sense, so, and for that same reason, because we're now here, we can get access to this to put some, you know, deoxid on these trim pots and just clean it all up a bit. So let's do that. Now, uh, if my memory is correct, uh, these two I think are for speed, and this one actually might be for, I think, clock speed or something like that. I've never found it necessary to adjust it or to even check for it, because everything just worked, so... There might be reasons why you would need to look at that, and the service manual will tell you about that. Um, so far I haven't needed to, so, you know. But it's the adjustment is there if you need to. Okay, well I'll try to do this on the tripod, but I just can't get this silly camera to focus. Um, we need to mention that uh, we've got two 
capacitors here that are actually bipolar. So when you're going and ordering your capacitors, make sure you get that right because um, you don't want to put the wrong thing in the wrong spot. Um, I don't know if you can see on these legs, um, especially this one here, it's pretty bad. You know, you can see there's been a bit of leakage and I think on this one too. They're not looking too flash. So again, these old Matsushita uh, capacitors, we want to get rid of them because they all do leak. You know, it doesn't look real flash to me either there. Well, they say life's a troll and then you die, and it seems to be that way sometimes, doesn't it? I've got everything. Look, everything except for the bipolar 47s. I've got some bipolar 100s, uh, which is actually what I would have picked was in here, but uh, my memory's obviously fading a bit. But anyway, everything else. Uh, this 1000 UF is a bit bigger in diameter. But if we have a look at where it goes, let's have a look in there. You know, that's that's the one that's going to replace there. There's tons of room, you know, no trouble at all. And I do know that for a fact anyway, because I've, I bought these for the other SL5. I always buy a couple extras just in case I ever do another one. And here I am doing another one, so that paid off. So I'll replace what I have here, um, and I'll make that list, you know, available if anyone wants to have a look. Um, I replaced what I've got because some of those old capacitors look pretty rubbish. So we'll uh, we'll do that, and then we'll soldier on. And uh, when I next go out, I'll um, pick up those replacements that I need. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll get it underway. Then we'll screw this back on. When I get the other capacitors, I'll just you know pull that apart and do that. That's not really interesting enough to to video, but I'll video the next uh, step of doing all these just you know so that it's there and you can see what's involved and hopefully you're not too scared um, to try it. Uh, I do say I think if you are worried about soldering or your skills aren't up to scratch don't. Um, practice on something that you don't really care about you know buy like a little five dollar AM radio or something that's not working and, and you know, practice just replacing some of the capacitors because sometimes that's all they need to get going again. I should point this out too while we're here. As you can see, there's a bit of like yellow stain there. I mean, that's uh, old oil grease or something. I mean, it's pretty, yeah, goopy, as you can see there. Um, I'm going to clean that off and, and replace the grease that goes on there. Uh, that's the bit that goes on the bottom of the spindle there, like that. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that have a bit of fresh grease or something there. So we'll do that. Adieu,